Hello there and um, welcome to this Jam tutorial class on maths presented to you by O3 Schools Jam app. Um, we've been seeing it and I will try to keep on saying it. O3 Schools Jam app is a very, very useful application which is a must have for well, any student preparing to take the Jam. Now, why is this app so useful? Well, it has various features and well, things it has to offer which will guide you and help you to obtain the best score possible in your jam. Now, I'm as you are aware, reading for your jam is one thing, but you also have to attempt past questions. However, attempting ordinary past questions is not all. Even while attempting past questions, you also have to practice these past questions on the CPT to get used to the experience of writing your exam with a computer. Now, Auto Schools Jam Bab offers each and every one of these features I have mentioned. Well, it has the software, which is a facsimile, you know, looks exactly like that. You shall see on the day of your jam. So, with your auto school jam app, you can put it in the mock exam mode, and as such, you're able to actually go through the exam pretty much as it would be on that day. Choose your four subjects, put the time, and start solving. The appearance of the system is pretty much the same as that you will see on the other jam. It is able for you, easy for you rather, to get used to this and um, also to help you improve not just your accuracy, but your speed to get you comfortable with the system. Then also, by the mock exam, it also has good and accurate answers to the questions so that even if you do fail questions, you are able to learn. Like after the mock exam, you can actually go there and look at corrections to see what you failed, what the correct steps are, and that would help you get better. Because remember, as I say, practice makes perfect. Just be get your three schools jump back to get access to these features and more, such as a question search feature. One of my personal favorites, in which you can actually search for topics or actually you can search for pretty much anything by using a relevant keyword. So um, you could search for any topic at all. For example, you're looking at maths, you could search or sets or in our topic today you could actually just search for gradients and you see those questions in which they mention gradients come out so you're able to tackle those questions which lets you know whether or not you have actually read it and you've truly covered any topic you are about to deal with so main features of this old three schools jam back it's very flexible you can adjust it to your own needs you could decide to just write the mock exam on just one subject you're testing yourself on just that subject Yes, you could try each and every one of these. However, merely just installing the app on your phone or on your laptop is not going to be enough. You should also have to activate this app. Now, the activation fee costs just 2,500 Naira. This is a very, very small amount of money to gain access to so many features. Just 2,500 Naira only, and your app will be activated. There are so many ways to proceed with payments. On your app, simply go to the point, you know, click the buy activation pin, and you shall see the options listed there. You can pay with Google Play. You could pay with Paystack, that is, you are paying with your ATM card, or the so transfer, POS, you know, cash deposit in the bank, whatsoever works best for you. Choose that and pay, and your app will get activated. Um, there's no risk that you pay and your app will get activated. No, no. You pay. Um, if you pay using your pay stack, your app is activated instantly. But if you pay using your transfer, you will have, you will have to send your receipts to the phone number as indicated on the app, and it shall be activated so promptly. So there's no issues with that. If you just pay for all the proof of payment, which is your receipt, to the number as you see in the app, and your app will get activated. So get your three schools jam app, activate it, and follow us as we hope to get you to the best possible score you could get in your jam. Now, within this class, we shall be looking at coordinate geometry. Coordinate geometry. Now, basically, when we say coordinate geometry, we're looking at points and lines. Points and lines. And typically, coordinates are described with two numbers included in a bracket. The first number always presents the x-coordinate, 
why the second represents y and please note this is what we mean by the x and the y okay the native go graph your coordinates simply have a starting point which is zero then measuring upwards and downwards is your y in mind that up is positive and down is negative then measuring right and left is your x axis the right is positive left is negative so to locate any point on this axis if we use the coordinate system for example 2,5 means my x value is 2. I should be locating 2 here, while my y value is 5. I should be locating 5 here, and wherever these two points meet is the coordinate being specified. See, that's all. Then also, like I said, we deal with points and straight lines. Now, when dealing with straight lines, instead of having to always draw these different types of straight lines we're able to describe these lines with certain equations so instead of you know drawing these lines we describe them using equations so these equations are what we're also going to study within this topic the equations you can use to describe your line however in coordinate geometry what's the simplest thing you have you have points now, if I have a point here and I have, say, another point here, the shortest distance between those points is always a straight line. That's the shortest way to get from this first point, which you can call x1, y1, to get to this next point, x2, y2. And therefore, if I was to calculate this distance, the distance between points, which as you are aware is a straight line, so this distance is very calculated as the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. It's that simple. To calculate the distance between these two points, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. But that's not the only thing we can do with these two points. We can also find the midpoints. The midpoint simply means trying to locate the perfect center between these two points, the exact middle of these points. And the coordinates of that midpoint can be given by x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. So remember, we look at distance between points, that's a formula for all the straight line drawn into points. Then to get the midpoint of that line, the coordinate of that midpoint, this is your formula. Now, the last thing we also look at here is the gradient of a line. Now, as you are aware, these two points form a line. Now, to find the gradient of said line being formed, we can simply use a formula which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 it is that simple really y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay however there's another way to get this if you look here from here to here should be y2 minus y1 and this should be my x2 minus x1 and from trigonometry i know this if my angle is here theta then this is my opposite, which is y2 minus y1. This is my adjacent, x2 minus x1. Opposite of adjacent is tan, which means that my gradient m also equals tan theta. So if you are being given the angle the line forms to the horizontal, simply find that the tan of that angle will give you your gradient. And note gradient may also be referred to as the slope of the line. So, you remember, we've looked at three different things now. The distance between points or the length of a straight line between two points. The midpoint between two points and also the gradient or slope of the line being formed. Note your formulas. Because next, we want to look at the equation of the line. Now, for equation of the line, the equation of a line comes well in three distinct forms. Now, number one is the simplest form, which is gradient 
intercept form gradient intercept form and that is y equals to mx plus c that means to find any y coordinates of this line so we come to gradient times the x coordinates at that point plus c where c is your y intercept y intercept simply means the point at which your line cuts the y axis the point at which x is zero on your line so y equals mx plus c that's gradient intercept form the second one is gradient and one point if you are giving gradient and one point this point could be x1 comma y1 how do you get the equation of your line well in this case your formula becomes y minus y1 was to m into x minus x1 you see also quite easy y minus the value given here your y coordinate because your gradient also given open bracket x your variable minus x1 value also given that's a gradient one point form and then last but not least we have two point form two point form and in this case simply becomes y minus y1 over x minus x1 equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and this is your two point form so if you ever asked to find the equation of a line equation of a line always comes in one of these three okay now the next thing we have to look at is intersection of two lines intersection of two lines now um if lines are if you are considering two lines relationships between them can be broken down into three within this topic there are the two simpler ones which is either parallel or perpendicular now what does this mean for parallel lines these are lines that shall never ever ever meet these are lines say something like this and if i drew this accurately which mine are not so you know if you have to straight lines and hold perfectly horizontal lines moving there's nothing to make them meet if they're both going around the earth they'll both go around the earth and come back and still never intersect with each other those are parallel lines while perpendicular lines are lines which meet at 90 degrees so how are we able to tell these from equations it's quite simple really for parallel lines the gradient of the first one equals the gradient of the second one that is all for parallel lines the gradient of one equals the gradient of the other however for perpendicular lines well the gradient of one times the gradient of the other equals minus one the product of the gradients we always give you minus one which means that m2 the gradient of the second one equals to minus one over m1 see that is simply that well the third one not usually asked as often but which can also be asked is what happens if these two lines neither meet at 90 no are these we going to pass or be parallel neither perpendicular nor parallel what if the angle at which they meet is anything other than 90 how can i solve for that well in that case simply note that um, the angle between these lines tan theta will be equal to m2 minus m1 over 1 plus m1 m2 m2 minus m1 or 1 minus m2 all over 1 plus m1 m2 that will give you the tan of the angle between those two lines see and funny enough these are all the formulas we shall be using when studying the equation of lines so for quadratic geometry these are the formulas and please note them and once you do we are once again ready to open our old three schools jump up and begin to tackle 
questions. So let us begin. Okay, get in mind. Open my outreach schools jump up. Um, okay, my first question is from the year 2001. And this is question 27. 2001, question number 27. It says a point P minus 6,6 and the point Q, which is 6,6. Sorry, this is minus 6,1 and the other point is 6,6. .6. At the two ends of the diameter of a circle, we want to calculate the radius. Remember, if I try to sketch this here, it means that um, if this is P and this is Q, which means quite simply that the distance from P to Q gives me the diameter. However, they want the radius, which means if I get at my diameter divided by 2. So that means the first thing I have to do is find the straight line joining P and Q. And as we are aware, the distance between these two points, P and Q, is given by the root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. I'm always free to name them as I wish. For this x1, y1, x2, y2. Even if you were to switch them around so that this is now x2, y2, x1, y1, it wouldn't affect your answer. So, once I have these, I'm ready to solve. x2 is 6 minus x1 is minus 6 squared. y2 is 6, y1 is 1 squared. Okay, minus times minus is plus. So 6 plus 6 is 12, and 12 squared is 1, 4, 4. 6 minus 1 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. So that should give me 1, 4, 4 plus 25 is 1, 6, 9. Square root of 1, 6, 9 is 13, which means that my diameter is 13. But remember, we said radius equals to diameter over 2. So the diameter is 13 divided by 2 gives you 6.5. And that is option A. You see? Very, very easy. All you have to simply remember was that in circles, from one end of the circle straight to the other end of the diameter is this, and radius is half of that. Okay. That was easy enough. Let us try our next question. This time, all the way from 1998. And this was question number 23. This is our second question. It says, if the distance between two points, and the points are x, 3, and um, minus x, 2. If this distance is... 5. want to find x. Well, um, for sake of my solve, let's call this a, let's call this b. So I will know that the distance between a and b is, as we did in example 1, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Well, quickly, x2, remember, x1, y1, x2, y2. Well, x2 is minus x minus x1 is x squared plus y2 is 2, y1 is 3 squared. I remember this is equal to 5. So that means 5 equals the square root of minus x minus x is minus 2x. And minus 2x all squared is minus 2 times minus 2, 4x squared. Here is 2 minus 3. 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Minus 1 all squared is 1. Now we know that the only way to get rid of square roots is to square both sides. So 5 squared is 25. This square removes the square root and I'm left with 4x squared plus 1. So collect like terms. 4x squared equals 25. Plus 1 going that way gives me minus 1. 
Now, before a squared equals to 25 minus 1, which is 24. So, over 4, over 4. X squared equals to 24 over 4 is 6. And therefore, X must be the square root of 6. Which you can see quite clearly is our answer. Because that is option C. So, you see, these things are all truly simple. Just follow the formula and you shall always get your answer. Okay. Moving on to question 3. This time, it is gotten from the year 2021, Model 2. Question 39 over 03 screws jump up. 2021, Model 2, question number 39. Okay. Let's just write that here. Model 2, question 39. It says you have to find the gradient of a line which is perpendicular to the line that passes through a minus one comma p and b p plus one comma two the gradient of the line is perpendicular to this let's see how can i do this well i know that normally the gradient of slope should be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so we'll use m to represent slope so let's just use m well this is x1 y1 x2 and y2 so my y2 is 2 y1 is p x2 is p plus 1 y1 is sorry x1 rather is minus 1 remember x2 minus x1 so this is x2 minus minus x1 x1 that gives me 2 minus p over minus times minus is plus 1 plus 1 is 2. Now, normally, this is my gradient of the first line. And please be careful. Looking at my options, I can see this is option A. Don't be deceived. This is not your answer. You are asked to find the gradient of a line perpendicular to this line. Implying that this is my first line, M1. What I try to find is M2. And if you remember, we said for perpendicular lines, m2 equals to minus 1 over m1 see which means simply m2 should be minus 1 over what i just got and um, to make my solving simple and fast remember that over means divided by what did i get here 2 minus p all over p plus 2. so Normal mathematics, minus 1, division turns to times, and this sum of sorts, that becomes p plus 2 over 2 minus p. Now, I know I'm to multiply with minus, right? But I have to be careful. I look through my options and realize, okay, in all the options, in none of them, do both my numerators become negative. Which means rather than multiplying the top with this minus 1, I'll multiply the bottom with minus 1. Meaning, I will still have p plus 2. Because in none of my options I repeat, the table will become negative. I will not multiply the top. Instead, this minus 1 comes down here and multiplies to minus p. So p plus 2 remains p plus 2. Minus times 2 is minus 2. Minus times minus is plus p. And the rearranging so p comes first gives me p plus 2 over p minus 2 which quite obviously is option b see so again the solving is very very simple we keep moving forward or whatever backward never this time for question four we are going all the way to 2014. Question 33. And this one says, the gradient of the line joining x, 4 and um, 1, 2 is half. We are to find x. Well, it's quite easy because I remember that m gradient equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 
Well, that means M, which is half, will be, remember, it's usual X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Y2 is 2, Y1 is 4, X2 is 1, X1 is X. So, first multiply. All dry weight and subtract first. Let's do that. 2 minus 4 is minus 2, over 1 minus X. And then now, I cross multiply. 1 minus X times 1 remains 1 minus X. 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. Therefore, leaving minus X over here, minus X becomes minus 4. Plus 1 goes there, becoming minus 1. So minus X equals minus 5. But we want to find positive X, not negative X. So over minus, over minus. And automatically, X must be equal to positive value of 5, which is option C. So I hope we get these. These are all truly simple. And as we solve, let us proceed. Okay. This time, um, we are going to 2019, Model 2, actually Model 1, Question 8. 2019, Model 1, Question 8. And I believe this should be our fifth question. It says, if P, which is 2 comma M, is the midpoint of the line joining Q, which is m comma n and r which is n comma minus four if p is the midpoint of the line joining q and r i'm to find the value of m and n well what do i mean by midpoint i know that midpoint equals to x1 plus x2 over 2 y1 plus y2 over 2. Well, my midpoint P is 2 comma N. And this ought to be equal to X1, which is, remember, let's say bell X1, X2, sorry, X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. Well, X1 is M plus X2 is N over 2. Y1 is N y2 is minus 4 over 2. Now, obviously, this x value equals this x value. This y value equals this y value. So, that means 2 equals to m plus n over 2, while m equals to n plus times minus is minus 4 over 2. Well, let's begin to solve them. 2 times 2, 4 equals to m plus n. Then here is having 2m equals to n minus 4. And automatically, I can tell that this is a simultaneous equation because I have two variables. How do I deal with simultaneous equations? Well, m plus n equals 4. While for this, let's rearrange it to look like this. Let's make minus n go this way. That gives me 2m minus n equals to minus 4. Now, I want to try elimination method. And how to eliminate n, first of all, because it seems much easier to do. Well, this is positive n, negative n. To make this n cancel each other out, I can simply add. Because I'm aware that m plus 2m gives me 3m. But 1n plus times minus being minus 1n minus another n is 0, which means n is gone entirely. 4 plus minus 4 plus times minus is minus. 4 minus 4 is 0. And if 3m equals to 0, then m must be equal to 0. And funny enough, on getting this answer, I stopped solving. Why is that? Because I've spotted that in only option C do I have m equals to 0 as an answer. Which means since I know m is 0 and only C has m equals to 0 automatically, it doesn't matter what n is again. My option says me is 4. Because I've already gotten this, I know it must be 4. I mean, more than one option had m equals to 0, then I would have to continue. But since only one option has that, I have to can't stop here because I know I've got my answer 
already. But just to see it, I could take this equation back and say m plus n equals 4. And as a result, if m is 0 plus n equals to 4, anything plus 0 plus anything is that same thing. And you see n equals to what? 4, just as I said. So this, if you are solving a question and get part of the answer, and notice only one option actually has that part in that answer. There's no need to proceed. Simply stop there because you are done. So you don't waste time solving a question which you already have the answer to. Okay. So now let us try um, a sixth question. This time from 2021. Model 1. Question 9. This one says, two perpendicular lines, PQ and Q arrow, intersect at 1, comma, minus 1. These two lines meet at this place, and they are perpendicular. Well, if the equation of PQ, PQ is one of the lines, is x minus 2y plus 4 equals 0. That is the equation of one of the lines. I'm being asked to find the equation of the second one. Keep in mind, they both meet at this point, which means they both pass through that point and they are perpendicular. So first off, let me arrange this in the proper form. Remember we said gradient form y equals to mx plus c. Let's make this look like this. How do I do that? Well, leave y here alone. Minus 2y, x goes here that way. Minus x, 4 moves. Minus 4. Okay? So, remember, y equals mx plus c. So, I see divided by minus 2. Minus 2, minus 2. So, that y equals to minus cancels minus x over 2, minus cancels minus plus 2. So, you see, this is the equation written in proper form of the first line. Let's compare this to y equals to mx plus c. y is y, x is x, meaning that this my m is being occupied by, well, 1 over 2, why my c is 2. However, I do not care about the c. I care about this gradient. And this is the first gradient. Why do I care? Because I know that the gradient of a line which is perpendicular to this must have its own gradient being minus 1 over that. See? This is where all this coming. As long as the lines are perpendicular, the gradient must multiply to give you minus 1. And as such, m2 must be equal to Minus 1 over, which is divided by 1 over 2. That gives me times 2 over 1, which is minus 2. So the gradient of my second line is automatically minus 2. And I know that this line passes through this point, making this my x1 and my y1. So ask yourself, what do I know? I know the gradient and I know one point. Is there a way to form the quotient of a line isn't just created at one point? Yes. We learned that when we said gradient one point form is y minus y1 cos m into x minus x1. You see? That means automatically y minus y1 is minus 1 plus the gradient minus 2 to x minus x1, which is 1. Minus times minus is plus. This is going to be minus 2x. Minus times minus also plus 2. Now let's take a look at how it is arranged. Well, in all their options, all the numbers are on the left-hand side equal to 0. Which means I have to do the same thing. So I'll be having y plus 1. Minus 2x travels the other way, becoming plus 2x. Plus 2 travels that way as well, becoming minus 2 equals 0. So, well, y plus 2x. 1 minus 2 is minus 1 equals 0. If I take my options, well, it's not option A because option A is 1x or 2y. That's not what I have here. It's not option B or C because those are having minus 3. But option D is telling me 2x plus y minus 1 equals 0. And as we are aware, that's being done by switching these two, which is exactly the same. So my answer is option D.
You see, this is how we solve very, very easy. Let us proceed. This time, we are looking at question 7. Brought to us from the year 2020, model 2, question number 5. What does this one say? This one says, a line perpendicular to the gradient, perpendicular to this gradient, 3 over 2, passes through the point, minus 2 over 3, and minus 1 over 2. Find the equation of the line. This question is pretty much exactly as the one we just did before. Just now in this case, I don't have to find the gradient myself from the first equation. It's already given to me. So the gradient of one line, and we're told that these two lines are perpendicular. So just as before, m2 is minus 1 over m1, which is minus 1 divided by 3 over 2. Basic mathematics, sum to times and some assault, minus 2 over 3. So I know my gradient, and I know my new point is this. And as such, again, gradient and one point gives me y minus y1 equals to m into x minus x1. Well, in this case, I'm going to be using m2, y7. Well, y minus y1 is minus 1 over 2 equals m2 minus 2 over 3 into x minus x1, which is minus 2 over 3. Okay. Minus times minus is plus, that's y plus 1 over 2, plus to minus 2 over 3, x plus 2 over 3. Well, let's see what can be done, what can be done. Quite simply, open that bracket, 1 plus 1 over 2 equals 2, minus 2 times 3 is minus 2x over 3, then minus 2 over 3 times plus 2 over 3, minus times plus is minus, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9. But what else can be done? You can simply ask yourself, if you look at all your options, none of them have fractions. Is there a way to make all these linear? Yes. How do you do that? Multiply by the LCM of all the denominators. This is over 1, this is 9, this is 3, this is 2. Which means that the LCM must be 18. I'm going to multiply everything by 18 to make it all linear. 18 times y is 18y. 18 times 1 over 2 is 18 over 2, which is 9. 18 times minus 2 over 3. Well, that's 18 times 2 over 3. 3 a 1, 3 into 18 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. So that's minus 12x. And 18 times 4 over 9, which I'm doing here. 9 year 1, 9 into 18 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. They say I have these. And well, 18y plus 9. Well, take minus 12x this way, plus 12x. Bring minus 8 as well. Plus 8 equals 0. That gives me 18y plus 12x. And 9 plus 8 is 17 equals 0. 17 is a prime number, meaning I can divide. So if I check my options, well, yes, that is option C. So I do hope we are getting how these work. It is very, very easy. Okay. So... Let's simply um, take, well, one last question. This time from 1999, question 21. This is question 8. And it says, we have to find the tangent of the acute angle between 2x plus y equals 3 and 3x minus 2y equals 5. To find the tangent of this angle, is we have to recall that we had a formula which had tan in it. And that was that tan theta equals to m2 minus m1, 
over 1 plus m1 m2 and as a result how do i find this angle well i need to know the gradients of both sides so let's start with this first one if 2x plus y equals 3 then y equals minus 2x plus 3 and as such if i compare it to this general form my gradient must be m1 equals to minus 2 so i know my first gradient second one 3x minus 2y equals 5 rearrange minus 2y equals to minus 3x plus 5 over minus 2 over minus 2 over minus 2 well that gives me that y equals minus cancels minus here 3 over 2x then plus divided by minus is minus 5 over 2 and as usual we don't care about the intercepts we know that the gradient here must be this number before x which means that m2 equals to 3 over 2 so automatically i'm ready to solve bringing them into this formula tan theta automatically becomes equal to m2 3 over 2 minus m1 which is minus 2 all over 1 plus m1 which again is minus 2 times m2 which is 3 over 2 so in my numerator minus times minus is plus i'm having 3 over 2 plus 2 all over what my denominator this is going to be 1 minus because plus times minus is minus okay sorry yeah minus then this 2 cancels 2 and i'm left with 3. so what's that going to be giving me well in this case over 1 lcm is 2 2 into 2 is 1 times 3 3 2 into 1 is 2 times 2 4 all over 1 minus 3 is minus 2 so this is 3 plus 4 7 over 2 this big over can be taken as divided by minus 2 and that's 7 over 2 times 1 over minus 2 7 times 1 is 7 2 times minus 2 is minus 2 sorry 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. However, please take note. So, um, once you get this your angle, it is much easier and way safer to take it as a positive angle. Reason why is because, well, both lines are overlapping. And while we may mix them up and call one M1 and M2, there's no real form or structure to that. We're always working in the first quadrant. And the first quadrant, theta is always, well, positive. So, we do not take this negative value. Instead, we take the positive value of 7 over 4, which is option C. So, remember, you can only ever take a negative value if you knew exactly.